This country's largest public sector unions are promising a summer of discontent, accusing the federal government of abuse, as you just heard there, for ordering their workers to boost mandatory in-office work days from two to three days a week. Here's how the minister responsible responded. A hybrid work environment is not within the collective agreements. It is something that at the time of the negotiations, the Government of Canada retained prerogative over to determine the scope of the hybrid environment. With us here now live in studio is Public Service Alliance of Canada President Chris Aylward. Hi, Mr. Aylward. Good to have you here. Thanks for making the time. My pleasure. You heard what the minister said right there. Essentially, it is the federal government's right to decide where the public service works, and it's not within the bounds of the collective agreement that says otherwise. Your response to that? We had a letter of agreement as a result of one of the largest strikes in, the, in, in Canadian history just about a year ago on this issue. We got a letter of agreement. They have failed to honor that letter of agreement. They, they've, not, they've done nothing but stonewall us on that. But what the real issue here, Vashi, is that this government is now sending workers back into offices that are ill-equipped. There's simply not enough space uh, in the offices. Minister DeClos is selling off half of the buildings, the federal buildings. And now they're saying, oh, no, everybody back in the office three days a week. Minister Gabo thinks that we, we need to protect the environment. The Liberal government just implemented the, the carbon tax. And now they're going to put hundreds of thousands of more commuters on the road, road. And they're asking workers, as I said, to go into office space that are not very well equipped, that are not, you, you can't simply book an office just like that overnight. It, it, it is very uh, strenuous to try to get office space there. So what uh, employees are doing, they're booking three and four days a week. It is absolutely chaotic trying to find space. And what, what are they doing when they go into those spaces? They're opening up a laptop and doing exactly the same thing, getting on a Teams meeting, right. exactly the same as if they were working remotely. I do want to unpack the logistics of it in a second, but I just want to be clear. Is it your understanding that this is part of the collective agreement? What does the, how does a letter of agreement differ, and what obligations, in your view, does that place on the federal government? Could they, can they just arbitrarily do this? That's part of the problem, that the they just simply unilaterally did that with no consultation. But getting back to the letter of agreement, they simply didn't honor it. They, they, the letter of agreement calls for the creation of panels so that they can review any uh, request outside the normal two to three day a week. They haven't even done that. So they haven't honored the letter of agreement that they signed last year during bargaining. You're right, it's not part of the collective agreement, but yet it's a letter of agreement that they are now simply haven't honored and are simply walking that back completely with this new mandate. Was it your understanding that, for example, in this situation, when they move from two to three days or two to whatever days, if they decided to change, that the obligation was on them to consult? Like, is there any written obligation on them to do so? Because it, I, what I've heard from your you and your, your other colleagues is that that didn't happen. You were basically notified five o'clock the night before that happened. The government, for the past number of months, have been asked directly, specifically Treasury Board and Treasury Board officials, are you changing your telework policy? No, we are not. Th that was their answer. And then the follow-up question, of course, if you do, are you going to consult with the unions? Absolutely. That was their response. Not a single bit of consultation took place on this. It, it was broke through the media. They were forced then to announce it last week on, you know, Monday, they were forced to, to announce their new mandate of three days back in the workplace starting in September. It simply, it, it doesn't make any sense as to what was the basis that they're saying now three days a week? Well, what I was that read, based on? We got an expanded statement from the minister's office. I want to read part of it uh, to you and get your reaction. Essentially, uh, Minister Anand says this was an administrative decision taken by the Treasury Board Secretariat. This was not, she went on to say, this was not a political decision. Hybrid work is not a collective bargaining chip and was not part of the signed collective agreements. Public Services and Procurement Canada has confirmed that workplaces can accommodate this transition. How do you respond to that? Because she's essentially saying it's our right to do this and it'll be fine. Okay, it's the right to do this, and so let's ignore any agreement that we have, specifically with the Public Service Alliance of Canada, from last year. They have totally ignored uh, that letter of agreement we have. Uh, so, and again, the way they went about doing this, absolutely no consultation whatsoever, it, and it simply makes no sense, you know, to say, you must now come into work, find a, find a, a suitable working place, open up your laptop and do exactly the same thing as if you were working from home. It just doesn't make any sense. So again, th that statement doesn't really say what it was based on. Oh, 
bureaucrats made this decision. It wasn't uh, the, you know, the, the 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 ministers that made this decision. Come on. The, the original like, the original letter seemed to imply that the uh, secretariat felt there would be a higher level of productivity, that there are benefits to being in person with your colleagues, and that was the, the motivation for doing so. I think a lot of people listening won't necessarily disagree with that. And they also will have the sentiment listening to this, hey, I got to go in five days a week. What's the big, I mean, the public services has a, has a farm, you know, I mean, the text messages I got today after our interview, you know, implied they have a much more secure job than I do. Why shouldn't they go into the office? For two years during the pandemic, federal workers in this country demonstrated that remote work is very productive. We sent out tens of millions of Canada emergency relief benefits during the pandemic, tens of thousands of Canada emergency wage subsidies. All that work was done remotely during the pandemic. So to say that they're not as productive, we're not buying that. All of the research actually shows differently. And this is the way of the future. This is Canada's largest employer, they should be setting the trend. They should be setting the pattern. They should be setting the example to say remote work is the way of the future. It's great for recruitment and retention that this government talks about. Why would you have to work in Ottawa to do a, a job that you simply go into the office, open up a laptop, and get on a Teams meeting that you could do from Winnipeg or Brandon or, or Halifax, for that matter? I think that I think that point makes sense. I think it's hard. You know, I, you know, I think it's different if you're going to your office and you're you have an office or a desk and you're with your colleagues. I, I do understand the productivity agreement there. If you're just going to go online, that's that's different. If you, however, are able to get embark on discussions or, or negotiations with the federal government, and they acknowledge that and the workplace environment changes, is this a matter of we're just against three days no matter what? Or is there a negotiation that could result in your union changing its position? We are opposed to the government promising workers in this country something and then not following through on it. They promised us consultation on this issue. We asked them specifically, but are you, you changing But if you get that, that consultation is my question. Are you just going to oppose three days no matter what? Or if you get that consultation, if you get a negotiation mm -hmm. with the federal government, is this a position you can move from? Absolutely. If they sit down and talk to us and if they stop walking back on their promises, because they continue to do that. They promised our, our, our members who work with the CBSA, who are currently at the negotiating table, and we're currently taking strike votes for them, equitable retirement. They, that was promised to those members, yet they haven't come through with it. There's been no discussion from their side at our bargaining table on this. And as I said, we're currently taking strike votes for those members. Now, are, are all of the members at CBSA, would they be able to avail of, of remote work? Of course not. But there is a large chunk of them that work right here in Ottawa, for example, that can be working remotely. So that is an issue at the bargaining table. And this employer has said, said nothing at that bargaining table regarding a three-day mandate. So the employer is the government. And in this case, the, the political figure at the head of it is Treasury Board President Anita Onnit. Have there been any conversations since the letter last week in the interim, since everything this morning? Is there any back and forth whatsoever? Uh, I'm not sure where Minister Anand was last week, to be quite honest with you. But no, I've had no discussions with Minister Anand. But I did speak with Minister Anand just a few months ago. And I asked her about the remote work policy. And were they changing it? She said no. And I asked, will, will we be consulted if there is a contemplation to a change? And she said, absolutely, of course there would be. We've never seen any consultation on this new mandate that they were forced to announce last week. What does a summer of discontent mean? That's going to mean everything. As you said, there were several unions uh, this morning at this press conference. We are going to have concerted, unified uh, actions across the country, both in the streets and in the workplaces on this issue. Because as I said, members and employees are fed up with this government walking back on promises that they've made to workers in this country. What does that mean in real terms or in layman's terms? Like you're going to file a lot of grievances. What, el what else are you, are your union members prepared there, to there do? There are, there are a number of things that we could do in the workplace, for example, against the, you know, to, to, to say that we're not happy with this. As I said, we're in the middle of taking strike votes for our members who work at the Canada Border Service Agency. Can uh, Canadians may expect to see long lineups uh, just like they did on August the 6th, just a couple of years ago, uh, when those members take job action. So our members are prepared. We just surveyed our members in the last three days. Over 55,000 of our members responded to a survey that we put out there, and 84% of them said they're prepared to take action on this. Is this primarily about not being consulted by the employer, by the government? Or is, I mean, your colleague there called it abuse. I think, I think a lot of people listening would think that's, that's a pretty um, extreme statement to make. We're, we're tired of the disrespect 
that this government is showing its employees our members. And if they can do that with their own employees, then this, this means that they don't respect workers in this country. And the Trudeau liberals, they, they've kind of propped themselves up as, as friends of workers. They've yet to demonstrate that. You've reached out to the NDP to ask them to use their leverage, you and a number of other unions, I should say, to ask them to use their leverage in the Supply and Confidence Agreement to push the Liberals into a different position. Jagmeet Singh spoke to that today. He said he stands behind you and those unions. He did not say he would withdraw his support of this government over this issue. He was not that explicit. And that's not what we're asking for. We're, you just asking, want them we're, to pressure? we're asking the NDP to use the levers and the mechanisms contained within that agreement to support us. And we certainly have. Uh, that supported the NDP, the only party that truly supports Canadians and truly supports Canadian workers in this uh, what country. What lever, Mr. Elward, do they have to push the government into anything other than withdrawing their support? They can put pressures on the government. How do you think we have a national pharma care program? How do you think we have a national dental uh, program? How do we have an affordable, accessible child care program? It was because the NDP were pushing those issues. And you believe that they will do that in this case? Absolutely. They always have. They've always supported workers, and I don't expect anything less uh, from the NDP in this round. And they've certainly indicated their full support, and we certainly appreciate that. I'm going to leave it on that note, Mr. Aylward. A pleasure to see you as always. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. That's Chris.